Hello everybody, hello dear friends and uh, astrology lovers and dear followers. Yes, it's Olga. I hope that you recognize me. Yes, a little bit of, you know, change was needed in my, in my, let's say, everyday life, in my appearance. So, yeah, this was the impact of the full moon, I think. So, um, yeah, I feel lighter and fresher, but we will not laugh. We will not talk about my hair today. We will, con we will talk about the transits, uh, planetary transits uh, of the week, of the upcoming week uh, from Monday, June 12th until Sunday, June 18th. Um, there are a couple of difficult aspects, a couple of soft, harmonious aspects that uh, balance you know, the general picture. There is nothing tragic, nothing dramatic, but, mm, mm, well, the situation is never perfect. The good news is that the full moon is behind this crazy tension in the air that, you know, when you feel that at least my head is going to explode, extremely difficult uh, emotional states, and, yeah, maybe that's why it pushed me, uh, the full moon pushed me to go to a, <laughs> to a hairdresser, because I needed to do something creative and, you know, mm, remarkable to bring some change. Okay, um, yes, the full moon is behind and, and the, the upcoming week, week will be, will correspond to the third quarter of the lunar months, okay, and uh, yeah, I, I, me a person, I also like this, this uh, phase of the lunar months. Uh, but I like less the days that, that, that uh, when we get closer to the new moon. Um, let's start from the beginning. So what about the uh, real aspects of the week? This week Mercury creates, Mer Mercury forms two major aspects on Tuesday and Wednesday. But before to talk about the aspects of Mercury, I will just um, mention the aspect of the last week that was ac uh, uh, accurate, exact, on Friday, uh, June 9th, on the day of the full moon. Uh, you remember this uh, sextile Venus, uh, Mars, Venus and Taurus in sextile, 60 degrees with Mars and Cancer? It was exact on June 9th, but the time of its action is from June uh, fir 1st until 25th. That's why I mention it, because it's like the uh, exact aspect is, is, is not far, you know. That's why it's, we will still feel its impact during the upcoming week. You remember that this, this aspect, sextile Venus-Mars, is, uh, is an aspect of romantic dating, at the beginning of love story and different yeah, rom romances. Uh, it's a good period for romantic and sexual relationship. Uh, the aspect enchases the sensuality and desire to possess, awakes the desire, uh, sexual desire, and the wish, the desire to transform the relationship from the intro, you know, initial, introductive, if you can say, we can, we can say so, period, you know, when we offer gifts and we invite the, uh, the person to the cinema or for a walk, into a closer phase, an intimate phase. Um, this is uh, if you if excellent period to start something new with the person that who we like, but at the same time, if we talk about the existing relationship uh, and where the couple experiences some misunderstandings and troubles and problems, it's a great opportunity to rearrange you know stuff to to find the uh, common language to comp compromise and you know to repair. What, what is not working properly. Yeah. Sextile Venus Mars. Uh, once again, those who have this aspect in their chart, they will be more sensitive to this, to this transit. You can, you can have this aspect not only, not, not obligatory in the same signs as the transit, you know, Venus and Taurus, Mars and Cancer. It can be, the planets can be in other signs other signs. Of course, if you have the same, uh, it can happen already. <laughs> also, it can also happen that you have the same uh, sextile in the same uh, degrees uh, of the same uh, uh, signs as the transit uh, aspect. 
uh, in any case, always go check to check your birth chart and the position of penance in there. Monday, uh, June 12th, the moon is waning, of course. As we said, the full moon is behind. The waning moon will be in Capricorn and the Earth sign in square to Uranus. In areas, squares and oppositions of the moon is always extremely uh, disturbing for our emotional state. So in this case, square to Uranus will give us emotional imbalance difficulties in relationships, you know, in exchanges, especially with women, quarrels and disagreements. Fortunately, it passes quickly, two, three hours, and it's over. Um, so what about our major aspects of Mercury? Uh, Mercury in Gem is in Gemini. I remember it entered Gemini in the last week. It will be in trying with Jupiter and Libra on Tuesday, and on Wednesday, Mercury forms square with Neptune and Pisces. And it will happen just before the beginning of the retrograde phase of Neptune. Once again, the two following days, you know, one after another, one day after another, we will live two contradictive aspects of the same planet. Yes, it will be manifested. Of course, one aspect does not cancel the other. It's like, you know, it's like to eat sweet and salty. <laughs> what does the trine do? The trine Mercury, Mercury Jupiter expands or widens, right? The per, our perception, the capacity of understanding of perception, intellectual perception, allowing us to have a good overview of the situation, and helps to see the perspective, the perspectives of a specific situation, as well as its problematic problematic sides. Uh, yeah, like. We, we we start we start having a philosophical mind, you know, that has no limits. Yeah, very large, wide vision. That's why it's logical that this period, uh, you know, the accurate aspect plus minus four days, is favorable for communication, discussions, for signing uh, important agreements, for creating uh, new content, for any intellectual work literary activity, for working with documents, for solving legal issues, and for public relations. Perfect, just amazing, gorgeous. Now, <laughs> square Mercury, uh, Neptune. Dream, uh, uh, dreaminess, dreaminess, right, dreaminess, uncertainty, you know, when everything seems foggy, uncertain to us, uh, our vision of the reality will be illusionary, illusions and even deception. Yeah. The day after the trine Mercury Jupiter. That's why on June 13th, 14th, it's extremely important to be attentive to new to any new incoming information because this information is to be contradictory or unreliable. That's why the, all the facts that we hear, that we receive, all the facts should be, need to be uh, rechecked, verified, or re verified, confirmed more than one time. Because what happens on the square with Neptune is that a free or um, involuntary, you know, or volunt voluntary deception is possible. When people lie to us without, <laughs> and they don't even want to do it, it's not intentional, intentional. Intentional or non -in not intentional deception from people, coming from, from people that bring to us new, uh, new information. That's why a caution is needed when uh, we deal with the new people, because we cannot trust uh, blind, blindly uh, people that we don't know. And all these, you know, promising proposals that uh, make uh, us dream. <laughs> we should not believe anything what we hear these days. So just to check many, many times before to give the final response. Uh, so now if you combine the symbolism, the meaning of the interpretation of, uh, the interpretation of these two aspects during you know, two days, one after another, what we will get in the end. Of course, one aspect doesn't cancel the other, as I said before. So, on one side, on one hand, uh, this trine, uh, Mercury, Jupiter, it defines a good period of, for productive, productive interaction with others, 
other people and for teamwork. Uh, we said before that Mercury uh, uh, in square with Neptune gives illusions, deception. So thanks to the trine with Jupiter, some illusions can be dispelled. Although there will be no absolute clarity of the situation. So it, it softens, huh, right, the trine with the Mercury, with the Jupiter, uh, without cancelling totally the entirely the square with Neptune. Uh, and this also another another thing is that the day of the exact aspect, Neptune square, Mercury, Mercury square, Neptune, it uh, will give us a good chance to correctly interpret and use hints that will come from the subconsciousness, from signs from outside, or even from our own dreams, because in, uh, this is the function of Neptune, right? Subconsciousness and uh, imagination, creative imagination. Uh, yes, so, yeah. If we had only one aspect, square, Mercury, Neptune, it will be worse, of course. But the trine with the, the Jupiter helps us not to, you know, make major mistakes. What will also help to overcome the negative impact of square, Mercury, Neptune is the actual aspect of the Moon, uh, the uh, trine Moon Sun on uh, Wednesday, June 14th. The waning Moon it will be an Aquarius forming trine to the Sun in Gemini, uh, f promising us a stable and harmonious psychological state, emotional state. The situation will be in, uh, in you know, relationship with uh, my family members, with people who are around us, will be normalized. You know, there will be n is the contrary of conflictual environment. Uh, that's why the day is favorable for family gatherings, for meetings with old friends, and for romantic romantic dates on Wednesday. In spite of yeah, we have we can go to the to the date. <laughs> we can meet with the family members, but we have to filter what we hear <laughs> because of the square and Mercury and Neptune. Well, the most difficult aspect of the week is of course opposition Sun Saturn. Remember that the um, a week before we had the position Mars Saturn. Now we are getting to uh, because Mars passed already to Cancer, right? And Sun is still in Gemini. Now the turn of the Sun to create to form a position to uh, to Saturn. Sun in Gemini in a position to Saturn in Sagittarius. The impact will last from uh, June 9th to 18th. Let's re recall the the symbolism of the planets. The sun symbolizes the deep consciousness, the ego, the potential, the creative potential, the will, so me, what I really want. Saturn symbolizes obstacles, delays, time, uh, authorities, high authorities, older people. So imagine these two concepts are in, uh, in, in confrontation. So the opposition Sun-Saturn sun, will awake, will wake up the conflict between personal and social. The inability to express ourselves, to defend our personal interests because of external constraints. Someone who, by age or position, uh, I mean, um, uh, status, has the right to tell us, you must do this or that, or it is forbidden to do this or do that, can, unfortunately, impede the realization of our plans. We, can, we have to wait this aspect to pass. We cannot oppose ourselves to this uh, position. It serves for nothing. We should not enter into conflicts with the representatives of the authorities. And it's not, it serves for nothing to, to, you know, to try to be noticed by the uh, managers or bosses, supervisors, superiors, because instead of receiving an encouraging bonus, we risk to be charged with an, an additional load <laughs> of tasks and responsibilities. It's not the time to look for the, uh, you know, encouragement and promotion, especially not a promotion. Uh, 
Uh, also, this aspect can give, uh, of course, uh, you know, this cooling down in any relationship, professional or business uh, or um, uh, romantic. And what is the right strategy of behavior here? The more the, the rightest. If you start a confrontation now, you know, if you feel the wall, if you feel that everything is, is once again like with the, the same, like with Mars the past week. If you see that we cannot. Uh, Realize our own personal, you know, individual plans and dreams, and maybe even even though even they, if they, you know, incredibly good, and we believe in them, yeah, it will be uh, easier and more efficient to uh, work on them after this aspect. So, if we start a confrontation now, confrontation with obstacles, you know, this fight with obstacles, uh, we will not achieve anything. It's better to show flexibility and to follow the, um, you know, to follow the flow in order to get out of this period with the minimal losses. Also, this aspect gives a lot of, you know, um, the energy, the uh, vitality, the general vitality and the energy of the organism, of the body, strength, you know, uh, it, it, it's low and weak. So it's important not to work too much, not to be, over, not to overwork ourselves. Uh, we not have to, if you feel tired, you have to take some rest. We, we should not force ourselves to work uh, more than we can because it will be difficult to um, recover, you know, because the, 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 the forces are very weak, the strength. The vitality, the the, the uh, energy, um, but still, the day of the aspect Sun Saturn, opposition Sun Saturn, uh, we have this softening aspect, you know, uh, that helps. However, a waning moon in Pisces and trying to Mars in Cancer, a water trine on Thursday. Normally, trying uh, Mars Moon increases energy and constructivism. We feel more energetic, but um, yeah, normally we would get pleasure from intense uh, physical exercises, ac physical activity like dance or whatever physical. It will be a good occasion to get rid of the accumulated tension. But don't forget that the background aspect, the position of Sun Saturn, is more powerful because the, uh, this aspect involves slower planets. It takes time to be formed, it takes time to, to, be un to get unformed. That's why its orb is always larger than the orb of the transit of the Moon, for example, or even of, uh, of Mercury. That's why even if you have a very harmonious Moon aspect, we have to see what is behind if the background aspect is negative uh, and it involves slower planets. So, of, of course, uh, opposition Sun-Saturn will, uh, will uh, dominate, will um, give the rhythm, you know, the, will define the energy, the, the general energy of, the, of these days, plus minus three days, um, before and after the exact aspect. All right, uh, now, um, Friday, June 16th, Neptune starts, begins its retrograde phase in 14.15 degree of Pisces. It will retrograde until November 22nd of this year, of course. You know the planet, this slow uh, planet, of course, uh, Im influences, first of all, some gen general uh, uh, processes on a larger scale, like of a society or well, group, society, country, or uh, even, the, the, of course, the entire world. That's why um, the retrograde phase of Neptune brings to the fore the issues of spiritual development, of liberation from illusions in partnership relationships, both personal and business relationship. This may be the period of uncertainty, of doubts, of complex psychological states. Once again, here we have to check what does Neptune, Neptune in our personal chart. Let's say it's the ruler of the ascendant, if your rising sign is Pisces. Where it is? Where is Neptune? In which house? Which In which sign? What planet uh, uh, it forms? Uh, you know, 
what aspect it forms with other planets. So we have to see, to look for Neptune in our chart. What is its position? Um, on a more global scale, you know, the, uh, in, the, in, the, in, in, the, in the entire world, on the global scale, uh, the question of ideological religious doctrine will be activated, because, uh, which is extremely important because any society without an ideological basis has no goal, so it moves to nowhere. Um, yeah. Uh, what else? Yeah, we could uh, hear about some, you know, corruption scandals when uh, in the countries where it exists. <laughs> it exists everywhere, right? Uh, corruption. Well, there are other countries that there are some countries that are more subject to to this uh, phenomenon. Friday, very, oh yes, very interesting aspects on Friday. Friday, uh, June 16th. You imagine the waning moon will be in, in uh, Pisces and in conjunction with Neptune. Neptune, which is the ruler of Pisces. Um, so the uh, theme of Pisces is underlined. Um, late in the evening, the moon will be in square with Mercury in Gemini. So the conjunction moon-Neptune in Pisces um, awakes increased sensitivity, instant reactions to erection to any influence, impact from outside. You know, when we feel the vibrations of other people, and even we think that, yeah, we feel the vibration of the of objects. <laughs> Prophetic dreams. State of trance. We can we can easily enter these states, trance states. Um, medi uh, medi medi meditative states, yes. It will be easy to meditate, yeah, in one word. Also, if somebody practices psychic readings, um, you know, any esoteric science, especially psychic reading, when we need to use our intuition, yeah, our uh, visions will be will, uh, will extremely uh, clear and impressive. Uh, you know, we will feel the presence of uh, other people who are not here, who are very far, but we will have this feeling that they're here with us. And then, for example, we discover later that this person was thinking of, of us at this moment. <laughs> so extremely, oh my God, thunderstorm, <laughs> tropical at this time at 7 p.m. Um, so extremely vulnerable emotional state. Uh... At the same time, despite the desire for higher harmony, uh, there may be a tendency, especially if we talk about extremely sensitive people, those who have in their chart, for example, the moon in Pisces, or in another water sign like Scorpio or Cancer, there will be a tendency to you know, solitude and isolation. Fears and phobias can also wake up. Uh, this per these people can show distant, like, you know, Disconnection, dist distance, uh, which could s look rather weird or strange, also craving for alcohol. So, any sensitive person this day on Friday may become tearful, sentimental, not focused enough, especially if in your region, for example, the, the, the weather is bad, so it will not help. Um, that's why we have to to control our emotional state on Friday, and to, of course, first of all, to avoid alcohol, and uh, maybe if we are alone, not to, not to stay alone and to to find somebody to go to go out with, um, because we don't, nobody needs the, the, the to, to to enter into the depression, right? On the square with the Mercury later in the evening, emotional instability, fixation on little things, you know the that are not worth our attention. Superficial chatting can hinder concentration and can be an obstacle to a productive work. Once again, women and their problems can get on our nerves. Why women? Because we talk about the moon. You know, problems with women. Between women and between men and women. Okay, the last, the last thing, like the end of the week, uh, the weekend. Um, 
We just mentioned the position Sun Saturn, right? Mercury is also in Gemini. It's it's uh, getting closer to the Sun. It also forms uh, a position on its turn, a position with the Saturn. So uh, Mercury in opposition to Saturn. This aspect will be accurate just in in a very specific negative context. Listen to me. Uh, before, one day before this aspect on uh, Saturday, uh, uh, June 17th, there will be a T-square in the sky. You imagine a position Sun-Saturn, and Mercury is also here, and the Moon is in Pisces, forming a square to Saturn and a square to the Sun and to Mercury. It's extremely powerful and uh, one opposition to two squares. A T-square, we know this configuration, right? So uh, it prepares uh, in a negative way uh, a big, you know, this background for the opposition Mercury-Saturn. So these two days, Saturday and Sunday, so the end of the week, will be extremely difficult uh, for contacts, uh, for trips and communication of all kinds. Uh, you know, we will not be able to get easy, free communication because we will feel mental blockage, I mean, us and other people also. Um, we may see delays of business meetings, delays and maybe, yeah, things that can maybe even cancel, but it's rather delays. Cancellation is erroneous. Uh, ob obstacle. Saturn, it's... Uh, you know, delay when it arrives later. Uh, delays in the reception of emails, of goods, of necessary information. That's why, of course, if you want a productive uh, result, it's not suit a suitable moment to present a new idea, to sign a contract, to set important negotiations. Disagreements over trifles can grow into a serious problem in dealing with business partners, superiors, or family members. Also, it's not advised to go for a tr on a trip the next uh, end of the week because, you know, during the T-square involving Mercury and on this such a negative aspect of Mercury, opposition to Saturn, the, day, the days, are, these are the days of increased accidents, injuries, and there is a high probability of terrorist attacks in the places, in you know, regions when there is a risk of these uh, attacks. So it's better not to go on a trip the next weekend, or at least, to, you know, to do something very local, uh, not to go too far, you know, being sure uh, about the state of your transport that you will use to go on, uh, on this trip. And the last thing, so on, on Sunday, uh, June uh, 18th, this will be the... Uh, Beginning, you know, we, we, we end on Sunday, we end uh, the uh, the third quarter of the lunar month. So we, we go for the last quarter of the lunar month, and in the end of which we will uh, meet the new moon. So the, the moon will be on Sunday, May, uh, May, June 18th, in Aries, in square to Pluto. Once again, a tense aspect. We will uh, live. Uh, we will live definitely deep emotional experiences. When women will want to dominate us, to show their excellence, and of course we would like to uh, respond in the same way, whether it doesn't matter if you are women or men, which will provoke a conf conflict, of course. Um, so it's better to avoid, you know, intense uh, uh, exchanges, uh, unless we don't care about the result. And also, we have to be careful with the quality of food, because in the square moon, uh, Pluto, uh, there's a risk of poisoning with the food that is, which is not fresh. This is it for today. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for following me and have a nice week. Stay wise and talk to you the next week. Goodbye.